I'll thank you for the opportunity and pray that you'll bless uh, this brother that he went to see here, Brother Gauss went to see this morning, but you get him out of the hospital. And uh, Brother Gowski, I pray, bless his church and his work here. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> I preached a series of sermons called uh, Great Bible Tragedies. I can't, don't even know why I came across that title. I probably stole it from somebody. But uh, Great Bible Tragedies, this was one of them. It was uh, on Aiken. It's an amazing thing when you study the Bible, what you learn about families and people. Um, you know, things just don't happen. Things usually come about as a result of disobedience. Adam's fall was a direct disobedience to God. Cain murdered his brother as a, as a result of a direct disobedience to God. Um, Solomon's apostasy was a direct disobedience to God. He had orders not to go to Egypt to get his uh, wives and his horses and all that stuff, and yet he did. I'm sure I could go on, but I think you understand where I'm headed here this morning. Strange, isn't it? How we associate names. Yeah. If I say Lot, you think of Sodomy. If I say David, you think of adultery. Strange, isn't it? David committed just one gross immorality, and it sticks with his name no matter where you go. I mean, when, when Hollywood made a movie of David, they didn't make a movie of David's great kingdom. They made a movie of David and Bathsheba. Um, if I say Jezebel, Think of Hiller. I mean, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. That slipped. Uh, yeah, we, we can't mix politics and religion. That's wrong. We think of wickedness and witchcraft. Murder. I mean, you go down the line. If I say Demas, you don't think of a companion of Paul, you think of a man who backslid. Yeah, yeah. If I say Aiken, <clears throat> so <clears throat> I always told my boys, and I got two of them here this morning, but I always told my boys, just remember this, no matter where you go in life, what your last name is. Because no matter where you go, you're going to have to live up to what was lived before that. And if you don't, I have a son in the Marine Corps. And, uh, well, brother, back to shows the lesser of two evils. Is, but anyways. And uh, some time ago, he uh, did a couple things. And uh, I found out about it. And his note to me was, who told you? And I said, son, didn't I tell you? wherever you went in this world. I said, your dad has been all over the country. I said, he's written some books. He's known everywhere. People are going to say to you, is your dad? So I said, I'm sorry to put that on you. <clears throat> but you, you can't escape it. You've heard people say, well, I thought you were a Christian. Isn't it strange the world knows more about what a Christian should do than a Christian should do? Yeah, amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's look at uh, here in the book of Joshua is where we'll be looking at. Verse 5 says, And the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate even the the Zubarim and so forth. I don't know if we read all the verses here. First of all, I want you to see that disobedience comes with a cost. One man violated the commandment of God, and thirty-six men died because of it. Think of that. One man disobeyed the commandment of God and 36 men had to pay. <clears throat> you know, um, you don't always have to turn to these if you don't want to, but Psalm 90, I'm going to look at Psalm 90, minute, verse 7. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, 
our secret sins in the light of that conscience. You know, over the, I don't, please don't mistake what I'm about to say here, okay? That over the past few years, haven't we been shocked by some of the things we've heard by some of the yeah. noted brethren? Amen. I'm not, you understand, I'm not judging you. I'm going to tell you something. The thing was, what it was is that that wasn't new to God. <clears throat> it may have taken 20 or 30 or 40 years for it to come out. Amen. And think of the repercussions of what has happened because of that. Think of the people that's been hurt. Think of the Christians who have quit. You say, well, they didn't have a reason to. Just, you know, it's easy to say something when it's not you. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I've often said, I just pray God every day doesn't let me quit. Yeah. In fact, I brought a sermon about quitting, and I'm not going to preach it, but uh, it, it'd be easy to quit. I, I, have I wanted to quit? You got time? All right. Sure, I wanted to quit. I wanted to quit a lot of times. Well, what you're, what, what you got to quit doing? Don't misunderstand me. But there's sometimes Lord says, you know what? Praying's not the answer, and we got to get up and get this thing taken care of here. Yes. Preachers, I've been pastoring now for over 30 years, and I can tell you, there's some things you just have to deal with in the front. Yeah. All right. I don't like it. I hate it. Those are the times I want to quit. And so He said, get up. He said. Um, Wherefore, lie thou upon thy face. What are you laying down here for, Josh? Look at verse 18. And he brought his house, and he brought his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Dad, died, and so forth, was taken. Joshua knew what to do when there was sin in the camp. But the easy way out is to pray about it. Have you ever had somebody say about this? Preachers, now you listen to me. Have you ever had anybody say to you, yeah, preacher, I'm praying about that. Yeah. I said to him, what are you praying about for? It already says this, you're not supposed to do it. How can you go out and pray about, should I fornicate? <laughs> How do you go out and pray, should I smoke? Uh, I always get one or two in this one. Well, how, how about... Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, not that. <laughs> it's, it's terrible thin to smoke it, but you in it. I mean, why would you want to choose something a fly won't land on that Billy Goat won't eat? <laughs> Disobedience comes with a cost. Thirty-six men died. And can I say this? I bet you those thirty-six men died and didn't even know why they got killed. Preachers, I've been with this long enough to see people who have been slaughtered in a church situation and they didn't even know why they were and they didn't know why they were getting out because somebody sinned. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, folks, sin has a great cost to it. Amen. Disobedience will affect your family. Oh, karma, I, I mean, they can come from a good family. Get a good testimony. Um, it wasn't perfect, but it was certainly better than perhaps some other members of the family. Uh, just because you come from a good family doesn't protect you from doing wrong. I have five sons and two daughters. I'm like Job. I pray every day for my children. Because I know there's an, I know there's an accuser of the brother out there who wants nothing more than take my kids down. And he'll do it. He'll do it. I pray for them every day. That doesn't mean they're going to turn out right. That doesn't mean they're never going to have any trouble. But I'm going to tell you something. Just because my kids come from where we had some rules and regulations and stuff doesn't mean they're going to turn out right. right. Doesn't mean they're never going to sin. Right. It'll affect your family. Verse 25 says, And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day, and all Israel stoned him with stones and burned him with fire after it had stoned him with stones. Affects the whole family. Came the destruction of a family. Imagine one sin of disobedience. My, I thought about that a lot of times. I thought, Lord, I am sure glad you're not healing out like you did in the Old Testament. Hey, fellas, can I ask you a question, you men? How many of you think you'd have a whole family if God was killing people for sin?
But it happened. It happened because of disobedience. People in churches disobey God every day of the week. They disobey the preaching of the Word of God every day of the week. They come and sit in a pew and listen to it and turn right around and walk out the door and do just exactly what they heard they weren't supposed to do. Not by the preacher, but by God. Sure, disobey the preacher. That's no issue. Well, it might be. But disobeying God, that's an issue. Verse 26, and they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of that place is called the Valley of Achor. Think about that. They named a place after a man because of his disobedience. Think about that. People would go through that valley from time again and time again, and they would see that, what this is, this is the Valley of Achor. You know why it's called that, son? Because a man disobeyed God and his family buried him. Can I, listen, can I tell you, not literal cemeteries, but can I tell you that this town, my town, and towns all over this nation have families that have been buried because of disobedience? Not physically, but they're buried in all the rubble of, well, if they would have, if they should have, and I didn't like what they said, and somebody did this to me, and I'll tell you what, it was all because they disobeyed what God told them to do in the first place. Serve, this is a Isaiah, for he served <clears throat> Baal and worshiped him and provoked to anger the Lord God of Israel according to all that his father had done. Well, I tell you what, if there's a legacy dads have to live with, is what your children do because you did it. There's, there's no bigger hypocrites in the world, please, than a dad who smokes and drinks and tells his kids not to. There's no bigger hypocrite. There's no bigger hypocrite than a mother who's a sleazy old woman, runs around and hangs around and does all kinds of stuff that wants to raise her daughter so they'll be pure. Nothing worse than that. That's the biggest hypocrite goal. To disobey God in front of your children but tell them not to? It goes on. It's going on in your church right here. It's going on here. When the gospel preaches, gives you the word of God, and people walk out the door and disobey what God says. Amen. See, how do you know that? I know human nature. And you can't preach 30 years to the same group of, well, not the same group. No, if I kept the same group, I'd have to have a church that holds three or 400 people. You preach to basically the same group of people week after week after week after week and year after year after year, and you see no change in their life. You know what, you know what they're doing. They're disobeying what God said. Amen. Amen. I just, it really irritates me when I hear people say, well, we, we just don't agree with your standards. And so I, I said to uh, a young couple one time when I was marriage counseling, and we were talking about certain things, they said, and, and the young man said to me, he said, uh, Pastor, he said, I just want you to know that we don't necessarily agree with your position on wearing pants. And I was like, what? I got someone. And I said, well, that's, that's fine. I, I said, 
Well, I sure wouldn't want you to start your family believing what I believe. And I said, I, I would like to ask you one question. He said, what's that? I said, do you know what God says about it? And he just looked at me and he went, no. I said, well, then I would suggest that before you make a decision on what you're not going to do, that you better find out what God says about it. Several years ago, many years ago, a man, I was working, we were working at the church, doing some work, I don't know, some construction side of the church, and a man come in, and he said, Pastor, can I talk to you? And I said, sure. So we went off to a little Sunday school room, he said, got them all set down at the table, and I said, oh, what can I do? He said, I want you to tell my wife to obey me. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Earl, I mean, I love my wife, but I'd have a hard time telling her, you will obey me, understand <laughs> But another guy wants me to tell his wife. Yeah. So, so here's what I did. You know, smart aleck because I am. Here's what I did. I said, okay, you need to obey him. Now, now I said, can I tell you something? He said, no. He said, I'm not going to have any preacher telling me what to do. My hand's up. And I looked at him. I said, well, I wasn't going to tell you what to do. I was going to read you what God says you ought to do. No, he said, you can. I said, well, then I'll expect her to obey you. See you later. I went back to work. <clears throat> Why? Well, I was wasting my time. Here's a, he's a nutcase. Middle ward. He wants his wife to kiss his feet and brush his shoes and comb his hair. But he don't want to be a decent husband. He wants to disobey what God says a man should do, but he expects the wife to obey him. Disobedience will affect your family. Oh, by the way, they're divorced. Shock, huh? I, I, I'm convinced. Now, listen, I know there's some things that go on, okay? I know that sometimes a husband gets loose and a wife may get loose, but I'll tell you what, I think a lot of divorces go on in this country are a result of disobedient couples who won't do what God says. Amen. Have my wife and I ever had a fight? No. Which one? <laughs> Have we? If we ever have an argument, if we ever disagree, no, she's disagreed. <laughs> Somebody said, what time did you leave? I said, I'm married. <laughs> that, that, Brother Earl understands that. But I'm telling you something. If I got to the point where I disobeyed what God told me to do toward my wife, could be a possibility we could end up with. I try to buy my... Now listen, you guys don't have to do this, okay? This is I know sweet stuff. And you guys are tough. <laughs> I try to buy my... I know when, I, when my kids were younger and they were all home, I couldn't spend money like I can today. Not that I could spend it much, but I'm just saying, I didn't have any extra. Why? It went into their clothes and their food and their schooling. My kids were first. I was last. But now I try to buy her flowers about every week, every other week. Right this and it got, it's, brother, I'm telling you, it's got wore out, though. Yes. I went and bought her some yesterday, cut them all up, stacked them in a vase, put them on the table. I was outside work, and I came in. She's standing at the table, brother. She's standing this far from the flower, sir. <laughs> kind of lies, man. In fact, she's dead line. I don't like you. But <laughs> I'll stand back. Uh, and I said to her, Brother Danny, I said, I just kept waiting for her to say, oh, thank you for the flowers, sweetie. And she just kept talking about some stupid paper on the table. And I said, oh, she said I didn't even see it. <laughs> and then they want you to say, you didn't notice my new dress. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Want to have a men's meeting? <laughs> Go back to chapter 6 in Joshua just a minute here. Verse 16. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew the trumpet, Joshua said unto the people, Shout for the Lord has given you a city. You know what happened, okay? I'm not going to read all this. Disobedience is the rejection of authority. Disobedience is a rejection of authority. They were instructed, go around the city. When the walls go down, 
You go in there, you get Rahab and her family, we're out, you touch nothing. Achan heard the message. He heard the warning, and yet like many saints in this age, he decided that he was exempt. <laughs> he decided he was exempt. How many people do you know that don't believe a certain verse applies to them? I know some. That verse doesn't mean to them what it means to you. Strange, it says the same thing to everybody, but it doesn't mean the same. I mean, thou shalt not doesn't mean the same to me as it does somebody else. In verse 18 it says, And ye and any wives keep yourselves from the cursed thing, lest ye make yourselves what? A curse. Notice the warning. See, when one person does something, others are enticed. Because why? He said, When ye take the cursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it, he gave them the warning. Listen, when you commit that sin, it not only affects you, but it will affect the whole camp and you'll bring a curse on it. Amen. I think there's churches in America that are just cursed. Yep. Because they disobeyed God and disobeyed God and went against what God said that God can't bless them if He wants to. Right. Right. Amen. We reject God's authority. I'll just give you one here, just Hebrews. I got some bunch of them here, but I'm not going to go to all these verses. All you Bible scholars know them anyways, but Hebrews 12. He said in verse 15, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up, trouble you. Churches are full of bitter people. And bitter people bring trouble. I had such a case here for a few years. A bitter person. Bitter. Nothing was right. Nothing was ever done right. Nothing was ever preached right. Bitter over stuff that wasn't his business. <laughs> you know, I don't mind when you get bitter over your business, but when you get bitter over everybody else's business, like, you know, put your nose somewhere else. Amen. Finally <laughs> left the church. And then he left the church and wondered why nobody came to visit him. <laughs> and after he left, of the church changed, the offerings went up, the attendance went up, people started getting saved. See, bitterness, sin, disobedience to God will cause trouble in the church. Amen. 7 1, which we read, says, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Disobedience, and I think we've said it, but I'll say it again, affects all. God didn't punish everyone. But his action stopped his blessings. The whole camp wasn't. God didn't come down and whoop everybody in the camp. But the whole camp was. See, sometimes people, there are things going on in the church, and people aren't involved in it. They're not a part of it. They don't even know what's going on, but they're affected by it. Yeah, that's right. Amen. I've had people say to me, Preacher, what's wrong with our church? I say, What do you mean? I said, I don't know. It just, there's, something's wrong. And disobedience will affect not only you, and it affects you more directly than anybody else, but it will affect everybody around you. Yeah. It's a disease. Amen. Joshua 22, if you will, please. Joshua 22, look at verse 20. Did not Achan, the son of Zerah, commit a trespass in the accursed thing? See, here we are. Man, we're, we're getting near the end of the book of Joshua. Guess who comes up? Achan, the fellow who brought the curse. Why? You never live it down. If somebody were to see this particular fellow I'm talking about today, you know what they think about? The relief he got when he left. The trouble he was when he was there. His trespass brought God's wrath on the entire congregation. Thirty-six men died on the attack of Ai, and it cost the death of his entire immediate family. You might rebel against God and think it doesn't matter, but I promise you there's reaching effects. Amen. There's reaching effects. Every one. Brother Mark's familiar with this. Some of y'all are too. Every the past 14 years I've been preaching. 
it's a maximum security, so we don't always have big crowds. We only allow 15 out of one unit, or 15 altogether out of two units. Uh, last week, I was preaching, sitting on the front row, of course, and this is not a, a racist statement. It's 600 people, and I imagine 500 of them are black. I know, I realize that's profiling. Sitting on the front row, that far from me, I stepped a little closer to him. This young man sitting there, probably 19. And I started talking about Jesus Christ is the justi justifier. And old Paul said, who is he to condemn him? I said, the only person that really has a right to condemn us is Jesus Christ. Well, you know, when you make a statement like that, you're, you're bound to get up. And he raised his hand. I said, yes, sir. He said, well, that's true, preacher. He said, how come the judge can put me in prison? I said, because the judge is obeying Romans 13. And the judge is the minister of God to punish you for your crime. Hand down. No further questions. <laughs> you think it doesn't matter, but it does. I told my boys in my school, I said, uh, you know what's going to happen to some of you boys? I'm going to be visiting you someday. You know? yeah. State penitentiary. Because you don't want to do what mama says, and you don't want to do what the preacher says, and you want to do what Sunday school teacher says, and you don't want to do what daddy says, and you want to do what the school teacher says. You know what to do! I says, I preach to a whole bunch of guys like that every week, every other week, or every, I'm sorry, every four weeks. <clears throat> Romans 5. This is all finished here. Romans 5. Verse 19. For by one man's disobedience. <laughs> for by one man's disobedience. We have an election that nobody wants to vote in. Yeah. Yes, sir, Buck. Right, right. Because of one man's disobedience, the Bible says, many were made what? And who does that many include? One man! And, and can I say this, please? That, now, and I don't know all the stuff that went on in the garden, and neither do you. I know that Eve was first deceived, and I know that she took of the fruit. And I know that Adam did not disobey God in that regards. But somewhere he must have disobeyed God in some responsibility he had or possibly he wouldn't have taken to that. Now I, I'm not here to preach that sermon but I'm telling you right now he's the man who gets the responsibility for the disobedience. And because of his disobedience to the command of God to you leave your <laughs> picking hands off of it? Every one of us has suffered a life of sinner. Amen. Now, don't tell me that you can disobey God and it doesn't matter. Right. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Our churches are full of it. Our country's full of it. Right. It's full of it. Amen. And brother, I'm telling you something. If we don't have a miracle intervention of God, we're up. Why? Because of the continual disobedience of the saints. I'll tell you what, America's in a mess because of the churches. Not in a mess because of Washington. We're in a mess because of churches that won't stand for the truth. I close, I'm going to close here, but I had to, I didn't have to, but I had a fellow in my church, a World War II veteran. He didn't attend real, you know, every Sunday, but they went to the United Methodist Church in Rose City. Now, you know, before you go anywhere, just wait a minute. But they would go to there, and then they would come to my service every Sunday morning. And they got saved in our church. He got that um, asbestos stuff in his lung. Male the you only know what it was. I went to visit him a week before he died. And his name was Jim Turner. And I said, Mr. Turner, I said, how you doing? He said, preacher, he said, I'm doing okay. He was a big jokester, so he had some joke stuff going on there. And he said, uh, 
But he said, I, he said, well, unless there's kind of a brother Earl statement, unless there's a technicality, he said, I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, he said this. He, here, you know, our World War II veterans were, they were our real heroes. Yeah. I'm not, listen to me, I'm not, I'm not debating any other war. Listen to me. They were the men who stood in line for hours and cried if they couldn't go in the military. Right. They were the men who, they didn't care if they got the medals. They didn't even fight for the medals. There's guys that are 85 years old getting medals they should have had 60 years ago. They didn't want no medal. They weren't. They were fighting for something more of a purpose. Right. And he said to me, he said, Preacher, he said, when you go back and tell the folks to pray for me, he said, I know I'm not walking out of here. I know unless there's some great miracle, which is probably not going to happen. So I'm not walking out. I know they're going to carry me out of here. He said, just pray that I can that that's a man see that's 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 something we don't teach men anymore endure it endure it they had to preach this funeral and they have a new pastor at this united methodist church and when i walked in he introduced himself to me he said i, I hear you're gonna give an invitation i said yeah he said great he said man he said when i come to this church the man they hit it for me, he preached for five years and he never he never invited anybody to get saved. And he said, that's what I'm doing every Sunday. I'm inviting people to get saved. Yeah. He was all excited. And so afterwards, I heard him talking. He wasn't talking to me, he was talking to somebody else. And he said that, brother, you, you guys will appreciate this. This is good. He said, to his, he talked to his wife and somebody else. He said, I was, there was another Baptist preacher there that they had invited to make part of the service. He said, I've been talking to this preacher. He said, you know what they do? They go out and knock on doors and tell people about Jesus. He said, wow, we got to do that. I'm sitting there going, this is a United Methodist preacher. And sometimes we think we're the only ones that haven't kissed the feet of Baal. And the Lord said, oh, shut up. Yeah. Yeah. There are some men out there who have not disobeyed me. I'm excited for this guy. Yeah. Amen. I'm thinking about joining him. No, I'm, th I, I'm thinking about trying to help him. Man, they, I, I'm not interested in getting rid of it. Get in and get the preaching to get some of them folks saved. Why? Because his church has disobeyed the commandment of God for so long, they don't even preach the gospel anymore. But that's going on in some independent Baptist churches. Brought in the world's music. Brought in the world's entertainment. Yes, sir. Come on. The preachers have slimmed down their messages. Tell the people nice little. down there in Lynchburg is, since the boy took over has gone to pot already. That's what hurt I've been there. Just hurt. Like, that's not unusual. If you don't get any good training on the way up, how can you carry on any? Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, brother, disobedience affects us all. Father, uh, I don't know you know. I just thank you for the opportunity. Say, I pray that you'll encourage these folks and 